Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ethics Experts Special Edition. We're here at the CEI conference in Vegas, and I got here Ronnie Feldman. Ronnie, we were talking about how uh, nice it is to see people in person, huh? Yeah, well, oh, thank you. Super nice, super nice. Like uh, You forget how much you miss just human interaction, yeah. right? <laughs> And uh, and uh, it is it's interesting because obviously people are masked up. It's been a pretty responsible event, but you know when you take it off, you see the smiles, you see familiarity, you you find like a common bond with people here, right? Because we're all dealing with the same issues. Uh, so I think it's been great. What do you what do you think? Uh, I I've loved it. Um, you know, it's great to see people. It's great to get the interaction. You know. The sessions have been great. Like I've had uh, a lot of good sessions that I've really enjoyed, but a lot of it is just kind of just bumping into people in the hallway, asking them what they were learning, asking them what's going on. And that's all really nice. Well, so really good point. Like, I, I you know, we, we go to conferences pretty regularly in a normal world and I learn much less from the actual events and more from the informal conversations you have in the hallway and that's something that that's definitely stood out is like because that's been missing for a while like you, you can't you don't get that in a virtual event so been nice really nice to have that kind of informal chit chat what's going on in, in your world you find the commonalities in that way and you always pick up a nugget here or there yeah um and uh you know i I agree. It's it's hard to get that in the virtual setting, right? Like even if they do like a virtual coffee hour or something like that, uh, it's hard to get that networking. Um, you had been talking a little bit about there have been a few sessions about doing training and engagement and awareness and people are seem seemingly more and more waking up to doing things in new ways. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, so we have a, a, a common experience where we talk about trying to get rid of the ways that people do ethics compliance that don't work, that keep happening over and over and over again. And it's been really nice to see that some of the, the sessions have been talking more about culture and um, influencing the culture um, versus just pushing out training that says that people pass the test. And so I, I feel like it's actually been nice to see more innovative vendors here um, uh, that are thinking about doing it differently. Um, and there are ways, the thing I love about ethics and compliance is that it actually has a way to influence the culture because you touch the entire organization. Um, and so you have this actually ability to communicate across the organization that this is the kind of company we are. We do things, uh, we speak up when we see problems. And, um, you know, I tend to use entertainment for, for my training and communications. And I think that that's a much more effective way to reach people and change their behavior. And I feel like going to an event like this, you start to realize that the world continues to come our way, yeah. right? Doing things not the same old way, um, just because that's all we, we, the way we've been doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a mix of a bunch of different things. I think some of it is just people on a continuous improvement path and maybe five or 10 years ago, they weren't doing any of this or they had a very restricted training and it's become, you know, um, more diverse in the things that they're offering and they're looking for ways to kind of make that better than it was before. Um, but I also think it's some of what we call compliance version 3.0, where it's not just get the training done, not just, you know, have a bunch of people who have completed the training, but is it actually transforming the culture? Is it getting in, into people's minds and hearts so that they're making different decisions? And I think people are realizing that our target is not just get someone to view something or finish the whole thing, but we actually want to make sure that, you know, five, 10 months later, they're actually retaining it. Yeah, well, and, and you know, you I love talking about this stuff because one of the things that I think about all the time is that, um, when I come to these events and you hang around with other ethics compliance professionals, you realize that they're trying to help people. Yeah. But there's a reputation problem, right? You know, the, when I, most employees hear ethics and compliance, they have a reaction and it's not always a good one. Oh, not that. Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. Maybe when they meet you. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, but if they were just to say, hey, there's there's this ethics compliance person coming, there's usually a, a different reaction. Sure. And I think we need to acknowledge that. And um, because people don't listen and pay attention if they're annoyed, apathetic, or afraid. Okay. Uh, so I like the fact that when you come here, it re reinforces the idea that there's all these people who are trying to help people. Mm -hmm. 
and we need to empower them to um, be more positive in their messaging, more uh, interesting, I, okay. I would say entertaining, but interesting sure. in their messaging mm -hmm. so that people will start to realize that they have a support system uh -huh. and not a bunch of people who are wagging the finger at them. That's great. I couldn't say it better myself. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us on this The Ethics Experts special edition. We're here at the SCCE CEI conference in Las Vegas. Stay tuned for more insights from great people who are here to learn and to help people.